In this video I'm going to look at some special sets and also set builder notation for constructing sets. So the idea here is that when we're talking about numbers there are some sets that occur so often that are so useful that we give them special names. So first I've got this one here with this slightly oddly written capital N and this stands for are the natural numbers. Okay, Now the natural numbers are the counting numbers. So if you, think, if you like these are probably the first numbers that people used when they started um, th needing maths. You know okay I've got three potatoes or I've got five sheep or something or other. So um, they're just whole numbers one, two, three and they're positive, you know, four, five, this means dot 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 means go on forever. Uh, so any, you know, 107, 364 uh, just uh, whole numbers. Now sometimes people might uh, like to include zero in the set, I haven't uh, done it, doesn't, doesn't matter too much, but we're thinking just of these uh, positive integers. And that's my next set, the integers. And the integers we denote with a similarly funnily written Z. So this one is contains all of those natural numbers, but also has the zero and negative numbers as well. Uh, so you know it's not obvious that human negative numbers would make sense. You know it's it's easy to point to two trees or to three apples or something, but it's a lot harder to point to minus three of something. You know we think of these things uh, very naturally these days because we're used to ideas like debt. So if I owe you two pounds, uh, I might think that I've got minus two pounds or something like that but that's a abstract concept that you know took a some time to develop when you think about it really fundamentally uh, you know all of these uh, even even two uh, is a, an abstract concept it's very hard to show somebody the number two you can show them two of something uh, but you know perhaps you show them two of some two pieces of paper and then they they rip one in half and suddenly there's three three pieces of paper you know have they proven that two equals three no um the the number itself is is just an idea so you know these these numbers over, over history developed and uh so here are the natural numbers first then the integers um what else what other sets of numbers could be uh, develop again things with fractions this is a set we call the rational numbers anything you can write as a fraction where the things in the set are um, integers and I can't have zero on the bottom um, so one third minus two seven three one seven six over four one nine six so these are what we call, call rational numbers again we've got a very intuitive notion that you know if you split a cake into three say uh, that might be each person getting one third of the cake but again it's a slightly more complex idea than just having one of something or two of something um, an even bigger set of number the real numbers uh, that's got all of the things that we've got above in it uh, but it's got some other things as well that you can prove that actually this set of rational numbers doesn't quite include everything so th things like the square root of 2 you can't express as one number divided by another number perhaps I'll make another video on that at some point but that's a bit more advanced than what we're doing here but it's not possible and so we need a bigger set something like pi uh, that's not a rational number that's irrational um, square root of lots of numbers you know things you know like square root of 3 square root of 5 square root of 7 will all be in this set but not in this set. Um, this one actually 2.36 recurring I've put in here actually that is a rational number now I could write that as a fraction but um, just make the point that actually all of these are also uh, in here. Actually you can take this even further and define complex numbers to include things like the square root of minus 1, 3 minus the square root of minus 6 you know uh, real numbers we can't take the square root of negative numbers, that doesn't make sense but it's possible to extend the system even further into complex numbers I'm not going to go into that here uh, I'll be in some A-level further maths but uh, just to say that we've got this sort of hierarchy of, of special sets so I could write here uh, n is contained in z is contained in q is contained in r is contained in C using our set notation. Remember, this means is a subset of. So anything that's in N is also in Z, but Z has some extra stuff. Anything that's in Z is also in Q, but Q has some other stuff. Everything in Q is also in R. Everything in R is also in C. And these sets are getting bigger and bigger. Uh, and sort of these are just containing some elements of these larger sets. Now the reason I'm showing you this is that we can use set builder notation to define some other sets quite neatly. We don't want to have a special symbol for every. Uh, set that we come across, we need to hinge some of them on the ones we already know. So this set builder notation says, okay, well, what about creating this set? Now what it contains is 2 times n for every n which belongs to the set uh, capital N for the set of natural numbers. So remember uh, that cap that set capital N I just defined as the counting numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Okay? So this one uh, is 
2 times n for everything that's in here. So if I take a number in here, like 1, I do 2 times it, and I get 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, so this is actually a way of describing uh, all of the even numbers. Let's see if you can think of a way of describing the odd numbers in the same way. I'll show you. It's 2n plus 1 for n in the natural numbers. Okay, so this would give me, if I start with, uh, well, I suppose it should be even better if I said 2n minus 1, given I haven't included 0 down here. So 2 times 1 minus 1 is 1. 2 times 2 minus 1 is 3. 2 times 3 minus 1 is 5. And this is a way of uh, writing down uh, a way of describing all of the odd numbers. And it can be really useful to have these sorts of definitions, but even an odd when we want to prove things about them. Now, I don't have to use special sets for set of notation. It might come up in other contexts. I might have this as my set T, and I might define a new set, which is, uh, say, all of the values of um, T squared, where T is in the set T. Okay? And all I would do then is just square all of these numbers. So 1 squared is 1, 17 squared is 289, 24 squared is 576, and 30 squared is 900. So that would be the set t squared, where t is in t. Perhaps I've then also got a set, uh, you know, which I've described, let's, let's call this set uh, that I've just made here a, and let's say I've also got b, which is the set uh, 2n, uh, n in n, which we've just seen a second ago, which is the even numbers, and I could start defining things like a intersect b. So a and b here will be anything that's even, and also in this set. So the only one that's uh, the only ones that are even here are 576 and 900. I might want to define a set like this. It says i. This is the set of all the values x such that x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. Perhaps I don't want to solve the equation here. I just want to say, well, I just want to say, well, this is the set of things that do solve the equation. Perhaps I can do something with that without having to solve it. Actually, if you factorize uh, this, you get x plus 3 times x minus 2. So actually, um, perhaps I should also say in here, you know, I'm just maybe take, I could also say that I'm taking just, you know, natural numbers uh, x, say. Okay, so actually, if I didn't have the x in the natural numbers, this would be, uh, this would be the same as the set uh, just with 2 and minus 3, because that's the they're the solutions to this equation, but perhaps I might also want to say, to add a condition in here as well, that uh, x is a natural number, so it's got to be a positive number, then it would just be equal to 2. So really what we're doing here is developing a language for dealing with uh, mathematical objects, talking about sets. So, you know, it may not be immediately obvious why all of this stuff is useful, uh, but think of it a bit like algebra, you know, you uh, you don't immediately see uh, use for the language, but actually having a, a rich logical mathematical language makes it possible to describe things to do with numbers, to do, to do with sets, to do with these mathematical objects. And that's a really powerful thing that we can use in all different situations. When you learn a foreign language, say, you don't immediately have a, a use for it. You know, you don't, you, you learn lots of vocabulary and you think, well, hang on, when am I ever going to use this? And it's only when you go to to, to to that country, say, and use the language, that you realise how important and useful all of that learning was. Sometimes maths can feel a bit like that. We're learning a language here that helps us describe lots of things in science, lots of uh, things in economics, so lots, of, lots of things all over the place that are, that are really useful. The language itself, I think, is very rich and interesting, and pure mathematics is a fantastic subject in its own right, uh, but it's also something that we can go on and apply to lots of other things.